uh, reboot. <laughs> so how many times have we done that now? We started off with logic and reasoning and proofs, and then we said, okay, let's stop. Second test, what was that? Would anybody even remember? What was the second block? We started off with propositional logic, right? Which was, what's our toys? It's propositions, and we did all the stuff. Okay, after that, what did we do? Anybody remember anything? Sets. So we did naive set theory and applications of sets and things like that. And now what did we just do? And remember what happened last class? Number theory, photography, and... And induction, induction proofs. induction proofs, right? Which is sequences and series and used in a way to show things, right? Which is still in the end was this idea of our new objects were uh, the integers. We looked at all the properties of the integers and how these work out. And because they're well ordered, we can talk about new sets of proofs. Now we're going to restart, and we're going to do a new branch of math. And this is necessary to do things like, for example, probability. And we're not going to cover probability in this particular class, but probability, if I ask, for example, what are the odds of rolling a prime number on a dice? If I roll a dice and it's a six-sided dice, how many primes are there? What, which ones are they? Two, three, and five. Two, three, and five. So what's the probability? Anyway, it's going to be two, sorry, three out of six or a half, right? One out of two. What's the probability of rolling a composite? <coughs> two six to the third, because the number one is neither prime nor composite, right? The composites are four and six, right? And so what would be the probability of rolling something that is neither prime nor composite? One six because it's the number one, right? How did you know that? At the very lowest level, you were saying, what was this number on top? When I said roll a prime, what did you do? You counted the primes. And then you had the number on the bottom. How did you know it was a six? There were six possibilities, but you did that by counting the sides. If you do probability, probability at its heart, we go all the way back to childhood. Chapter 6 is counting. We are going to learn how to count. In particular, we're actually going to talk about not counting, but rather advanced counting. Now, you get to go home and tell everybody you know, what are you doing in school? We're learning how to count in an advanced way. We're doing advanced counting. I'll look at you like you're crazy. You can get a master's in advanced counting. And it's just this in the stat side of this. And you're like, well, what do you mean? It's like, all right. We th sometimes think of things like, okay, two plus two is what? All right, two and two, and we count one, two, three, four, right? So if we do normal addition, counting is the lowest level of reasoning for quantitative reasoning. If we start off with things like two and you say plus two, Really what you do, you just simply put, put them beside each other and then you go one, two, three, four. Addition is not addition as a unique object that just simply comes down and we accept. <coughs> Counting is something that we accept. It's the idea of successor. Now, now addition is when we say two plus two is four, you memorize the answer and you stop counting, right? You just simply memorize it. That's advanced counting, right, for them. And you ask a child, all right, what's 24 plus 13? Well, they could put 24 and 13 and then count them, and you would say, well, that's silly. Why don't we just simply memorize the answer or learn techniques to jump to the answer so we don't have to count? Multiplication. What is 4 times 3? Well, that's 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is put 4, 4, 4, and then start counting. Why don't we just use the answer? What's 4 times 3? Just memorize it, right? So the idea of jumping to the next step is this idea that, yes, you could count and literally line them up and say one, two, three, four, five. Advanced counting is don't do that. Think about how it would have been done and figure out a way to get to the answer without literally saying 
one, two, three, four, five, to figure out how many things are there. Here's an example. How many people can solve a Rubik's Cube within a reasonable amount of time? There's a few, right? I'm going to mix it up and I give it to the normal person. What does the typical kid who gets sick of trying to solve the Rubik's Cube do? They break it and they put it back together or they take the stickers off and put them on, right? So now here's my question. They broke it and they walk away. And if you were colorblind and you didn't recognize colors at all, one of the things I could ask is, how many ways could you assemble that Rubik's Cube? How many Rubik's Cubes could possibly exist if you're just simply putting it together? <laughs> Would you like to possibly put it together and make a change? That's number one. Then they'll have number two Rubik's Cube, number three Rubik's Cube. Would you like to simply line them all up? and literally count every one of those possibilities? Or would we hopefully have an advanced technique that would tell us how to get to the answer without literally doing it? On the other hand, the way you have the advanced technique is inductive, right? The inductive technique is to tell you this would become this, would become this. You don't have to necessarily do it, but you could actually figure out the answer. But the inductive technique would also allow you to actually generate it if you chose to. As programmers, that's important. Like, I had a student that came and asked, okay, I have a problem. It's involving counting permutations and possible subsets. And then I have to check every single one of those. It's one thing for me to actually have advanced counting and tell you, here's your answer. You're going to have whatever, how many quadrillion things that you have to test. But if you actually have to test them, you're going to eventually have to generate them. And the nice thing about these counting techniques are they'll tell you how to do it, but they'll allow you to skip it and jump to an answer. 